Hey, teacher, good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. I hope you feel better today. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Okay, so my friends, we are going to start today's class. Of course, the first thing that we're going to do is to check about the platform. So let me just check something here. Hold on a second. Okay. So this is the class of today. And that is the question for today. And uh, tomorrow we should be finishing the midterm test. So we can do today the exercise 2.14. That is, uh, well, the first part says read the following definitions of needs, assessment instrument, then select the instrument. So we're going to check into that. And on the second part, select the correlative conjunctions that best completes each sentence. So there are also five questions. And once you finish this, you can move on and you can go to the next one. That's going to be the midterm test. Remember that this is four parts. So you finish the first part, you click submit, and then you move on to the second. That is also just five questions. Remember that for the ones that we need to type, we need to be careful. And uh, then we can move on to the part three. So just five questions. And then of course the final part, that is part four. And that is it, that is it, the final, no, well, no, the midterm test actually, not the final yet. So try to do it, try to be on time. I'm going to be sending the grades to and so forth this incoming Friday. So if you have questions, I will be checking into that one, okay? Okay. Good, so we are going to now check the attendance, definitely. Okay, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Yes, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Good. Present. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. <coughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, no worries. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Present. Osmin. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. Present teacher. Good. I'm here. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejia. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good, perfect. So we are going to start with the class of today, of course. So, a oh, perfect, Francisco Eduardo. Let me just check into that one and also Ada. Nice. Okay, got you, got you. Let me then just check. Here's it.
Okay, so this is the class of today, design a basic needs assessment instrument. So there are many ways for you to actually assess the trainings that we need. Questionnaires, observations, interviews, examining work, assessment, competitive analysis. And uh, well, we have this little thing that we're going to analyze today. So number one, what is training need assessment? So the training management cycle is like this. Step one is planning. Definitely we need to plan in advance what are the needs of the training. So we need to have a method, an instrument. We have to, to do certain things so we can plan. Then we have the implementation. And of course, after that one, we have the evaluation of the training. And it says planning is the first step of the training management cycle. At the planning stage, the steps are divided into two. Training needs assessment, TNA, and training planning. And this is like a little manual that we're going to check about TNA, that is training needs assessment. Good, so let's move on. The first part is going to be for Yvonne. Could you please help me with this one, Yvonne? Okay. Definition. Training needs assessment, TNA, is the method of determining if a training need exists and if it does, what training is required to, to fill the gap. TNA seeks to identify accurately the levels of the present situation in the target service, interviews, observation, secondary data, and or worship. The gap between the present status and desired status may indicate problems that in turn can be translated into a training need. Training Good, need. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, equal desired capability uh, minus current capability of the participants. Perfect, what did you get from this one? Uh, well, uh, that kind of method uh, is necessary if you want to identify uh, what is the current situation? And you can determine uh, what do you need to improve uh, the situation. For example, uh, if you need a training to improve knowledge, uh, to give tools to the employees, um, observation about the process, uh, if uh, the process is uh, correct, or do you need um, another uh, method to improve the process and, and the efficiency of of the of the every method that you want that you give and the in the company and you have a lot of options for example interviews observation assessment uh, service and that. Um, are really good tools if you have to uh, if you want to identify the needs and the gaps to the current situation to the the uh, your goal uh, for example if you are so far or you are okay in, in the in all your process that's very good so yeah, that is it. So the first part is this one, to assess, to evaluate what is the need of the training. I mean, the formula is very clear. Training needs is equal desired capability. So what we wish everybody knows or can do or anything related to that, minus what is the current capability of the participant. Of course, there are numbers for you to identify what is the gap, right? So depending on the area, if it's production, if it's sales, so you can identify a percentage or rate into this one, so you can move on. And let's see if we can find some words, I don't think so here. Okay, 
So let's move on. It says require performance or desired behavior because uh, sometimes it's either or, right? Requirement performance, so it's like sales, you have a ratio or in production or desired behavior that people have more they work more in team or they are able to manage crisis in different ways. So things like that. So we identify the gap that is the need and then we move them to the actual performers or behavior. The next one is for uh, Juan Miguel, is it possible for you or are you still very sick? Yeah, it's possible for me. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, training can reduce, if not eliminate the gap by equipping the participants with knowledge and skills and by encouraging them to build and enhance their capabilities. The data on the present status are vital to the evaluation or impact survey in the latter part of the training cycle. This, this shall serve as, as the baseline data. The following are some techniques for acquiring such data. This may be applied independently or in combination. Okay, what did you get from this? Um, okay, uh, uh, specifically for this, uh, you have a current stat, okay? And uh, the training can uh, improve the behavior or the status of your personnel, okay? But uh, sometimes it's not a, um, it's not only the training. Okay, obviously uh, you as a person in, in your team, you have to be more, uh, um, how to say, and enthusiastic. Okay, okay. Uh, and obviously uh, the training uh, must be the um um how to say this um, must be the enough in order to enhance your capabilities okay obviously in order to reduce these gaps okay uh, and uh, enhance their capabilities okay and a uh, um uh, you have a, or you must have a baseline, okay? But how to uh, get a baseline? Uh, maybe uh, asking your team, okay? Uh, maybe uh, making some, uh, I don't know if the correct word is, examines internos or intern yeah. exams. Internal quizzes, uh huh. Uh -huh in, in, internal quizzes, in order to determine if your team is in uh, all, all of your team, all all the people in your team are in the same baseline. Okay, in order to uh, get a better uh, um, maybe I don't know if it's okay a better baseline okay, or more realistic a baseline. Um, Very good. I think. Perfect, thank you, uh, Juan Miguel. So that is it. I mean, the very first step is to understand where you are, where the employees are. So as a team or individually, because that is very important. A diagnostic, the very first step that should be accurate because you don't want to provide trainings from, for things that they already know and they are going to feel bored or things that, I mean, leave behind things that they really need and you believe that you, that they are fine. So definitely this is very important. Okay, so the, the next one is going to be for uh, Maria Alejandra. Hi, teacher. Sorry. No worries. Um, the TNA. Starting TNA. Uh, yes, please. That part. Ah, okay. TNA is also the process of conducting information about and express 
in present of imply implied organizational need that could be met by conducting training. The need can be a performance that does not meet the current standard. It means that there is a prescribed or, prescribed. Prescribed or best way of doing a task and that varies from it, it is creating a problem. And the, the TNI process yeah. help and the TNI and the TNA process help the training and the person requesting training to a specific a specific, a specific the training needs or performance deficient. Assessment can be formal using survey and interview survey, survey and interview techniques are informal, asking some question of does involve. Perfect. So what did you get from this one? Mm -hmm. That when the organization need to uh, introduce a training or a presentation of training and don't know to the standards or have a experience in this try to give or um, recollect our information and with a specific uh, method and survey and an interview or asking some questions a different persons involving uh, the process or uh, the training to prepare for know more that how to improve the deficiency or that advantage for that um, the uh, process or that the implement perfect um, perfect that is it so collected information is very important but the accurate information as we mentioned before right let me just check if there are any words here. I don't think so. This is part of the introduction yet. Um, what is a deficiency, anybody? Lack of, Lack. of something. Lack of something. Good, perfect. That is it. When it's, it should be better, right? Something is not working. Nice. So the first, well, the se the next part says, why do we need training? This is also part of the introduction. So let's see. Uh, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help me with this? Yes, sure. Okay. And so, it says, because training is a means to ensure that government officials have the knowledge and right skills to be able to do their work efficiently effectively and competently. Training may be needed when there is a gap between the desired performance and the current performance. And the reason for the gap is lack of skill or knowledge. Training may only be able to resolve part of the problem because we need to analyze the problem and find out whatever training will be able to resolve it. If training is necessary, we also need to define the objective of the training and how it will help the staff members become more effective. This process is called a training needs assessment, show above or training needs anal analysis. Okay, please continue. Okay, it is important to note that despite many reasons to conduct training show above, training may, may sometimes not be only solution to a problem. There are many other means that impact on someone's ability to do their work. As pointed out in the report of training needs assessment by uh, Hillock, 
Yep. The following are other examples. Okay, LAC will be or pilot. Uh, yeah, you can say in both ways. That is not a problem. Okay. Lack of a skill or knowledge or experience, not having the right equipment or resources, not being encouraged by manager and colleagues to do the right thing. There are no standards or expectations that are set in community by the workplace moral or condition. Good, what did you get from this? Um, this is, well, this is really important when you when you set up a training for the member of the of the team, because uh, you have to make uh, your research. You have to know the the base uh, why the training will be or why or what the training will will result will solve, and that's why I guess that. The name of this point is report of training needs assessment. Because sometimes when you do a training, maybe it's really important to make one assessment to, to know uh, how, how was the impact or how the impact was with the, with the team members. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So definitely, so we need to assess, we need to check, we need to research, right? It's very yeah. interesting what it says at the end, it says that sometimes the training itself is not going to be the solution. It's not going to solve everything. The training is going to be regarding the knowledge, the skills, things like that one, right? But sometimes, yeah. sometimes there are other causes that impact the production or the processes that we want to correct. For example, the first one says lack of skills or knowledge that is that is for training related or experience. So experience mm -hmm. is a little bit different because you need to go and practice and do things, right? And actually the next one is very interesting as well. Not having the right equipment or resource, that is yeah. a big problem. Maybe you have the knowledge and the experience, but if you don't have the software or the equipment, well, uh, all things necessary to, to develop a job. Exactly. So that is important as well, right? It's not only the knowledge, but everything. Imagine the yeah. next one says not being encouraged by man and some motivation. I mean, yeah. sometimes you have everything, but you don't feel like happy there. So, of course, it's not going to be the same. Or the other one says there are no standards or expectations. You are doing your job and you don't know if, if it's good is bad if you need to improve, if you're doing too much, okay? And uh, the last one, bad workplace morale or conditions. So when the conditions at the workplace are not good, definitely it's not going to work. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. So let's check some words and let's see. What is to be competently? Anybody? Maybe to have the enough requirements uh, in order to uh, perform a task in a very, very good way or in the best way. Perfect, very good. So that is it, when yeah. you have the competence, so go ahead. Will be be able to? To be able to do, very good. To do something as Miguel says, in a very good way, in the optimal way, that's the word. And let's see. What is thus? What is which one? I'm sorry. Thus. Thus. The, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Anybody can help us with thus? Like this? Like this. Or yeah. For example, or uh, in, in this case, thus we need to analyze the problem. So of course, because of that, we need to. Okay. It's not so commonly used, right? It's not that common because, I mean, remember that this kind of articles, this kind of vocabulary yeah. is very professional, right? Yeah. And it's not what we use in a regular conversation. We don't say, thus, we need to go and look for beers. <laughs> like, okay. 
So, but <laughs> you, when you're speaking with your friend, so they say does. Yeah, maybe they're going to look at you and you're, they're going to say, well, are you okay? Or maybe, <laughs> well, the non-native uh, person who couldn't know uh, what that means. That is it. So yeah, this is in a in a very professional way that we're gonna use. That's why sometimes we see some words here that we don't use in a in a common or regular way. But it's good for us to understand because remember that mostly when we are writing, I mean when we're speaking, maybe you can avoid using those. You can use some vocabulary that is formal, but not like that. But when you're writing. Yes, you need to know a lot of vocabulary like this. So uh, things are not repetitive, looks professional. So it's very important that one. Good, let's move on. Let's see. There was some other. Oh, Imagina que este frasco. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, let's see. I remember there was okay. Point it out. What is to point out? Um, could be like indicate. Indicated. Very good. So when somebody says this is the reason or anything like that one, it's like. Showing, showing, very good. Showing, like, like yeah, like, uh huh, showing up, something like that, like, 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 yeah. <laughs> could, could be uh, used as uh, when you are pointing something in your Google Maps or something like that. It's also used in that way. So, for things, for example, when you are drawing in a, a map thing, a software, so uh -huh. you can say point out, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Good. Uh, there are no other here. So let's continue. So the next one is going to be for Ana Claudia. Could you please help me with this one? Of course. Uh, why do we need a training needs assessment? First, identify the satisfaction with the current situation and decide for change as similarities, I guess, is the pronunciation of that? Similarities, yeah. Uh, similarities among the request. Each request implies that a gap or discrepancy exists between what is and what could be or should be. A learning or performance gap between the current and desired condition is called a need. DNA aims at the following situation, solving a current problem, avoiding a past or current problem, creating or taking advantage of a future opportunity, providing learning, development, of growth. The purpose of TNA is to answer some familiar questions. Why, who, how, what, and when. The following are descriptions of the questions and what analysis can be done to answer them. Very good. What did you get from this? Yes, I agree with all of that. <laughs> uh, because uh -huh, with the first, uh, Here's the situation, the map for all the TNA you've been showing. Yes, it's very important that identify if it's worth it to provide that training specifically to identify the need. Uh, what is expected is to solve the current problem. And most of the time, yes, we, the, 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 the team, sometimes we have dissatisfaction uh, with companies, but because we don't understand some process or we don't have like the same vision or point of view. So these um, trainings are very important in order to align, uh, I guess, the two, the two parts. It says, Ray, also gap between uh, conditions that we decide to, to get or to, to achieve. Uh -huh. Very good, perfect, that was very accurate, nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So definitely, that is it. I mean, yes, we need to identify why do we need an assessment and what kind of assessment, I mean, what kind of training we need to, to implement, right? And yeah, the main focus is that one, solving a current problem, something is happening. 
So we need to solve that one. Or avoiding a past problem. So sometimes something happened in the past and we say, no, this can't happen anymore. We need to train them and make, make them sure that everything is going to be working well. Uh, creating or taking advantage of a future opportunity. So yes, when something is happening or when you uh, expect that the company goes to certain objective, it's important. And Ana Claudia says something, sometimes we are dissatisfied with things that happens within the company, but it's because we don't know. We don't know what are the objectives of the manager or, or of the board, what are the goals, and they just go and say, do this and do this. I don't do this. And we are like, this mm -hmm. is not good. But if we understand, if they say the objectives, if we work as a team, definitely that is going to be much better, right? And then we will say, oh, I know then why I have to do and why I have to do this. Mm -hmm. okay? And uh, provided learning, development or, or growth, definitely that is another thing that we do. And the last part is also very important. So. We need to answer questions like, why? Why is this happening? Who is doing this? And why is this person doing, doing this and not this other person that should be the person that's doing this? How mm -hmm. is doing that one? Why is not being done in this other way? What is happening? When is happening? So when we answer those, those questions, and that is not only because of the training, because of any problem that you have, then you will be able to identify the solution, right? Mm -hmm. Let's check some words, similarities. What is that? Things uh, equal to other in the one day match. Very good. So are things, like that, the, uh -huh. things that look uh, familiar one to other, maybe? Yeah. Very good, things that are kind of familiar between them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, each request implies, what is implies? Something as a uh, must, maybe. Okay, yeah, implies. Must include? I'm sorry? That something that yeah. must be included? Must uh -huh. be included, so. Okay, 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 thank you. Something that you know that is part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Good, and what is discrepancy? Differences? Difference. Difference. Very uh -huh. good. So that is it, different things from the results that you would like to get, nice. Things that doesn't match. Very good, yes. nice, good. And that is it. So that is here like the next part. So this one is going to be for, let's see. Ada is in surgery, it's just not possible. Marcos, could you please help me with this one? Okay. Um, first, why? Or, uh, yeah, why and then why is this important? Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Um, why? The purpose of TNA and quite conduct the training to tie the performance, the efficiency to a working need, and be sure the benefits of conducting the training are greater than the problems being caused by the performance deficiency. 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 Uh, deficiency. Conduct two types of analysis to answer the, this question. Needs versus wants analysis and feasibility analysis. Okay, what did you get from that one? Okay, um, let me see. um okay uh that we we have to to make uh, some question to to analyze if the training will solve a uh, deficiency um 
we have to be sure about the benefits the benefits of the training and for example we have to to compare the needs against the the things we want for example sometimes we we want to improve in some area but what we really need is improve another other area so we have to compare to the, the needs against the the ones that we have uh, i don't know what is feasibility okay let's check into that one so feasibility analysis so that is like is it possible? What are the components that is going to make that possible? So things like that. Okay, and yeah, the first one is why. Why do we need to conduct the training? Why is the reason? Is this so important? Is something that is going to impact our processes or cells, anything like that? So good. And let's see some words. I don't think there are many words here. Yeah, the, maybe the one was feasibility. Okay, who? Who is going to be for Danny? Yeah, sure. Who? Uh, who is involved in the training? <clears throat> who is involved in the training? Involved, appro appropriate. <laughs> appropriate. Par uh -huh. Appropriate parties to solve the deficiency. Conduct a target population analysis to learn as, as much as possible about those involved in the deficiency and how to customize a training program to capture their interest. Go. Cool. What did you get from that one? Um, <clears throat> this uh, <clears throat> is about to. Um, who who need uh, who are the target of the training who are the target of the training based on i i think based on ungap analysis very good actually that's it yeah so who needs to be involved in the training so we need to involve the appropriate parties, not everybody, or if everybody needs to be there, of course, but we need to analyze who, who is going to be there. Okay, so that is very important, definitely. Let's check some vocabulary. Uh, what is appropriate? Check the pronunciation, appropriate. Adequate. The correct. Very good, adequate, the correct. And parties, what is parties here? A part of a motion, <laughs> I don't know. The members could be? In member? Very good, so in this case it's the members. Like when we say a third party, a third party can be a person, right? So somebody else that is involved in a process. Good, and let's see. I don't think there is any other, how? This is going to be for uh, Francisco Eduardo. Is possible for you? I, I guess right now it's not possible, right? Right, teacher. Is it possible for you to read? Uh, right, teacher. I, I can. Okay, perfect. Don't worry. So we can do it later, whenever you are uh, back. Uh, 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 I can. I can do it. And you will be able. Okay, so how? Yours is how. Okay, teacher. How can the performance, the efficiency the, be fixed? Training can fix the perform, performance, the efficiency, or suggest other remediation is training is not appropriate. Conduct a performance analysis to identify what skill deficiency is to be fixed by a training remedy. Okay, what did you get from that one? Um, I, I think uh, is uh, the, the process that a uh, phone on the, how do you say the el punto de vista, teacher? The week, the week. Uh, you can say there is a word for that one, but go ahead, the weakness. Uh -huh. 
Ah, okay, to show the, the, the women in the, in the training. Uh, uh, for, uh, how do you say, a uh, reforzar teacher? Reinforce. 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 Reinforce, okay, reinforce uh, the training uh, for to, uh, or to be to be ordered uh, the the training uh, is is maybe a, a how do you say uh, uh, Llegue a las a las personas, se puede decir. Uh, so it is taken well by people, so it's actually working. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So, how can the performance business be fixed? So this is like we need to analyze what is the problem and how can we fix that one? Do they need motivation? Do they need a, a new software? Do they need uh, whatever they need, right? So how, how is that going to be possible? Very good. And let's see if there is any word. I don't think so. Okay, what that is going to be for a uh, Giselle? Okay, sure, uh, how? Uh, what actually? Give me a minute, teacher. Of course. Okay, what is the best way to perform? There is a better or preferred way to do a task to get the best results. Are the performance standards set by the organization? Are there governmental regulations to consider when completing the task in a required manner. Conduct a task analysis to identify the best way to perform. Good, what did you get from that? Uh, maybe it's the way and how you do, no, not how. Um, Yeah, it's the best way to do that the, the to do that the task or the or the um, the duty I don't know or the objective very good so on the first one in how is like how can we fix this so they need motivation or something like that what is going to be the answer of what is the method what is going to happen it's going to be a workshop do they need a video for them to uh, just get motivated do they need to go sometimes just to go to a little meeting outside of the work is going to be good for this one so what is going to happen what is the best way right thank you teacher good so let's check some words here i don't think there are any what is a standard like the perfect model for that process okay so there are like key things that everybody knows that they have to do so everything goes well right it's mm -hmm. it's like a regulation for everybody let's actually here's a regulation okay there are no other i guess okay when this is going to be for fernando gonzalez Is it possible for you, Fernando? Not possible, okay, no worries. Uh, Roxana, could you please help us with the last one? Okay, will training take place? The best training to deliver training because attendance at training can be impact to impact by work cycles holidays and sports and so forth. Sorry, conduct a contextual analysis 
to answer logistics questions. Logistics. Okay, good. Logistics. What is? Uh, what did you get from um, this? Well, let me see. Well, uh, I imagine that that uh, paragraph is talking about when uh, the um, employees applied the, the trainings when they are develop, development a uh, specific task in their work. And maybe uh, that's why the training take a place because um, when you are receiving a training, uh, it's totally different that the time when you need to apply the knowledge about the trainings. So okay. that's why I, I think that uh, the, the paragraph talking about that and the other side, uh, it, it says that conduct a contextual analysis to answer logistics questions maybe when uh, the people are applying the knowledge they have a lot of question new question about the, some process or some specific task in that moment uh, you have um, apply not only the knowledge that you get in the training. I think that in that moment, you need to apply uh, more knowledge about the uh, another experience or about another experience, personal experience or another um, extra experience about your uh, workers or something like that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, very interesting. This is more related. What, what you were saying is more related to the evaluation and implementation of the things that we learned from training. Good. Uh, so the question here in the paragraph is about when can we deliver the training? So depending on, in mind that the training it needs to be done in 60 hours. Well, yeah, that is going to be a big impact for the work, for the duties. So we need to analyze if it's going to be, I don't know, one hour a day, or if it's going to be on the weekends, if it's going to be a video, if it's going to be a platform so they can do it in their free time or whenever they have the time. So uh, everything, all the answers for this question are going to provide us the right feedback on how to implement the training, when to implement it, who, who is going to be involved, and what we are going to expect to be fixed. It's very interesting, very good. And uh, it says the best timing. What is timing here? Mm, look for the best schedule for all. I remember one time we, I was on a different account and I was an inbound call. So the queue was back to back and it was necessary. It, it was a mass that we must to attend a, a training. And what they did is they, they gave us lunch, but they made us to uh, attend the training in our lunch time. Oh, that was awful because we were eating, talking. Oh, no, you just don't imagine the headache <laughs> that most of the, the attendees we had at the end. It was so awful, <laughs> but there was no other option. Uh -huh. So it was, we must take our lunch time uh, in groups of 20 people, I remember, but uh, it was awful. Yeah, yeah, that, that is not good. I mean, because sometimes you want to have your lunch. It's the time of the day when you mm -hmm. relax and forget a little bit about mm -hmm. everything. But if you continue, right, so it's <laughs> not that good. <laughs> But you are right, sometimes it's difficult. I mean, if you if it's urgent for mm -hmm. people to get trained and there is no other time, I mean, sometimes it mm -hmm. should be that way, right? So that's the way it is. Good. Let's move on then. It says number two now, five steps of training is assessment. So the processes 
of training is assessment can be divided into five steps. Identify problem and needs, determine the sign of needs assessment, collect data, analyze data, and provide feedback. So these are like the, the, the five steps, right? And we can check there what is going to happen in each step. So for example, in the first one, we determine organizational context, policy, goal, roles, responsibilities, perform gap analysis, and set the objectives. So that is uh, very important, definitely. Then on the second one, we determine target groups to be trained, interviewees, methods, schedule. So that is also very important. Determine persons in charge of TNA from GDLA task force member. And then when the step number three, collect data. So whenever we have the analysis, we need to check that one, conduct interviews, administer questionnaires and service, review documents and existing trainings, observe people at work. So on step number four, conduct quantitative, uh, well, quantitative, that word is moving there, quantitative and qualitative analysis. So that is very important as well. Uh, drawing findings, conclusions, and recommendations of training contests, write up a report. And on the last one, make a presentation on the GDLA task force members and concern officials. Determine the next step for training preparation. So everything here is very important. And of course, we are going to check into that one in more details. Uh, the next one, step number one. So this one is going to be for, let's see. We're gonna go back. Uh, let's see, Ramon, is possible for you to read? Hello, Raymond. Not possible, okay. Ana Claudia, could you please help me with these two paragraphs? Yes. Okay, it says, the first step in TNA is to identify problems and needs. Before TNA is conducted, it should be proved whether training is needed. In the public sector, it is important to identify organizational contact in such aspect as policy, goals, roles, and responsibilities. Do I need to read all these steps? I'm sorry, you are on mute? Uh, yes, just the paragraphs. Ah, okay. Uh, let me just move the screen here. Okay, realizing the policy direction of the organization, performance analysis, NOAA's gap analysis is conducted to look at an official's current working performance and knowledge and identify whether an official is performing as desired based on giving roles and responsibilities. Then the more explicit the standard for current performance and knowledge, the easier it will be to describe the gap in performance of knowledge deficiency. Good. What did you get from this one? Uh, it's important to, to identify the problems in need uh, and that will be um, given the, the key for which uh, DNA is will be con which training is necessary or conducted. Uh, also, it's important to identify if it's necessary in a training or not. Um, here is saying something about the public sector. I guess it's because the organization is different than a private company. Uh, it's talking about officials, stuff like that, uh, roles and responsibilities. But, but the most important thing is to describe the, the gaps, identify gaps. Mm -hmm. Very good, perfect, that is it. So definitely that is the starting point, right? And that is maybe the most important thing because if you don't do this correct, the rest of the process is not gonna work. Exactly, and that involves money, right? That that will be also wasting money. Exactly, right. so it might to be in train 60 hours, wasting a lot of money, wasting a lot mm -hmm. of time. And at the end, that was useless, so. 
last mm -hmm. Okay, so the other two paragraphs. Uh, Roxana, could you please help me with this? Okay. Uh, it's during or after? During. Okay, during the preliminary study of PILAC, the current problem was identified as follow, follow. Identified. identified as follow. Training official is urgently needed to implement DAD, perform and improve local administration because the effect because the efficient and effective implementation of the DAD framework requires deep understanding of the framework's amount public official at the, at the national, provincial, and dis, district, dis, district, district. Mm -hmm. district level who are in charge of local administration. Casi nada. <laughs> okay, could you please continue? Okay. Uh, after identifying problems uh, and needs, set up several objectives for training courses. In PILAC, the following objectives of the training courses were already set up through discussion between JICA and the Ministry of In Interior, MOI. Prior to, prior. prior to act to project implementation, i.e. during the preliminary study, <laughs> public officials improve their, under, their understanding of the AT policy. Public officials improve their skill to apply the AD policy to their daily duties and functions assignment. Okay, so this is like an example, right? It's an example of so how, how could it look like the first part? So you are going to identify, for example, it's a training official is urgently needed to implement the ND reform and improve local administration because the efficient and effective implementation of the ND framework requires deep understanding of the framework. So you can see that there is the problem, there is the, the gap. So that the, the people doing that one, the officials, are, they don't understand. They're doing th they, are, they are doing things that are not correct. So they need to train so they understand better everything related to this and then they will be able to to do their job in a better way so is that okay. that is like the objective of this part it's like an example on that part okay okay uh, there were no words there and this is the step number two determine the sign of needs analysis uh, do you have a comment Roxanne before we move on no, no, it's okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. So the next one, the next two paragraphs are going to be for Yvonne. Um, the second step in TNA is to determine the following. Determine. determine the following target groups to be trained, interviewees, service methods, survey plan, including a schedule to be conducted, DNA, and persons in charge of DNA. Those items become the basis for a training course designer to either create a new training course identify an existing one that can fulfill the need or obtain one externally. And the other paragraph, please. And sometimes it may be impossible to fulfill the need, but that is not the decision of the person conducting DNA. Actually, knowing exactly what elements of information I require can serve as a guide, a roadmap 
for your analysis. Good. What did you get from this? Okay. Uh, that's a step. If um, for plan, uh, what do you have to do to create a, or select the right training uh, for feel feel the the need of training uh, of the every group of the every employee you need to select uh, the elements uh, or maybe if you evaluate if you have already uh, any training that you can apply uh, for the need that, that you have. And maybe um, you have to plan and include a lot of elements uh, to uh, supply the need of every 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 part of the of the need of the of the employees very good perfect so definitely so we need to determine the target groups uh, who is going to be interviewed survey methods survey plan there are many things that we need to determine so we can design what is going to happen so we can get the data that we need so we can identify the training. So you mind that this is just before the training. So everything that we're working on right now is just to identify what will be there, the needs of the training, right? Okay, let's see if there are some words. Let me see. What is to fulfill? Like complete, complete, yeah, good. to complete all the requirements or satisfy. Okay, very good, nice. And what is like a roadmap? The line that you have to to follow in order to complete a situation, or in this case, a a, a plan, maybe. Very good, that is it. So it's uh, the way that you need to schedule step-by-step step what is going to happen, but what, what are this, the, the guide for, for us to check into that one. Uh, before we move on, we're going to check the attendance, my friends. Let's see, here's it, okay. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. I know you're busy, don't worry. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So let's continue. Let me just check, Preset. Okay. So uh, let's continue. This is another example, but let's check and let's read about this one. Let's see. Um, 
Let's see who's going to read right now. Uh, Marcos, could you please read this? Okay. Uh, the survey. Yeah, please. Okay. The survey must clearly define the target group of the training. Um, target population also no strict rules for defining exists. The target population must be defined in line with the objective of PNI. The survey show produce the following elements in this report. Training subjects, importance of the training, time requirements, current target group, potential target group, frequency of training, and required opus of the training. Okay, we're not gonna read the other one. So just that one. So what did you get from that? Okay, um, the survey. The survey is like um, evaluation. Yeah, the survey is like, yeah, like when when you are saying uh, like a feedback. Or a feedback. A process oh, okay. or anything. Like so they're the asking interview. specific questions, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So I understand in this one that um, that we have to to have in mind clear that the target population to because it depends on the population or the target um, group, and we have to structure the, the equation and and we have to to create a report with with some elements, for example, the the training subject, the importance of the training, and the time requirements, and the frequency of the training, and the outputs of the training. So it's important to to define clearly all these elements in order that the training and will be um, a good training for the employees. Very good. So yes, whenever we are going to send a next, in this example, it says survey. It can be any method or instrument. But if you are going to use, for example, a survey, the questions are going to be there for you to identify if uh, the employees believe that it's important the training, uh, how long they believe is going to be the training, or like feedback on what they need to to do, how it needs to be done, the training. So, and says uh, type of training. So, well, this is not going to be something that we're gonna read. And then it says once target group for the training, target population is identified interviewers for the survey are selected. It is likely that all the officials of the target group cannot be interviewed due to time constraints. Thus, sampling of the target population, which will be addressed in the next section should be used. So in this case it says that uh, once we identify the instrument, we send that one. Sometimes it's not possible to send that to everybody, but we need to have a lot of people. So we have a good feedback into that one. And this is like uh, needs, uh, like this is like the, uh, like the evaluation, as you can see here. There are types of analysis, for example, and what the analysis answers. Performance analysis or gap analysis. So this is going, if we do this kind of analysis, we're going to answer these questions. Is this issue skill knowledge deficiency? How can the deficiency be addressed? Is training the appropriate way to fix this deficiency? So whenever we identify this, we can move on. Also, we can check a feasibility analysis. Why should this training be done? So is the, the reason why, of course. Is the benefit of the training greater than the cost of the current deficiency? So that is very important, okay. Needs versus wants analysis. Why should this training be done? Is the deficiency tied to a need? I mean, sometimes it's something that we need to correct, but it's not that important. You know, it's uh, something that can be done 
next year, next quarter, things like that. Goal analysis. What is the specific behavior in, improvement behind a back desire? So what do we expect the people transform, become into their behavior? Job task analysis. What is the best and correct way to do this work? How can this job and task be broken down into teachable parts? Okay. So we are going to, in this analysis, we identify exactly the job, the step one, step two guidance. So you can create like a process, task by task. Target group analysis, who is the trainee for this training? So an expert, of course, maybe within the company or outside. What is known about them to help design and customize this training? What other groups might benefit from training? And contextual analysis. When will the training be presented? What are the other requirements to deliver the training successfully? So as you can see, we can use one or many of these analyses and we can blend them so we can identify precisely what we need to be delivered, okay? So this chart is kind of interesting. And uh, well, data collection, let's check into that one. This is going to be for Roberto, is it possible for you? Uh, not possible, okay. Juan Miguel Brown. Okay, teacher, I'm here. Okay. Uh, data collection? Yeah, that, the survey methods, yeah. Okay, survey methods. That the collection and analysis are essential parts of needs assessment. The following table des describes the most commonly used, used methods of data collection. DNA is optimized when a combination of data collection methods is used to analyze quantitative and qualitative data. Regardless of which methods are used to collect and analyze data, it is important to consider the re reliability validity and trustworthiness of the data. Okay, and please read just the first one, a structured interview. Okay, table two, survey methods. Method, a structured interview, and the concept are the, the following. A quantitative research method commonly employed in survey research to ensure that each inter, interviewee, yeah? Okay, interviewee is presented with the same questions in the same order and that answers can be reliably aggregated and that, com and that comparisons can be made with confidence between subgroups or between different survey people. Interviewers read the questions exactly as they appear on the survey quest questionnaire. <laughs> Sorry. The choices answers to the questions is often fixed, close-ended in advance to open-ended questions can also be included within an within a structured interview. Okay, what did you get from that one? Okay, the method is the structure in the structured interview. So in this method, you have a questionnaire or a set of questions, yeah? yeah. In order to uh, ask uh, in the same order, but uh, to different people, okay? In order to, uh, to obtain or to get uh, data, okay, that you, Obviously, after uh, this uh, method, you can count and you can analyze. Uh, mostly of them, uh, like the second paragraph says, uh, are uh, uh, maybe just no questions. Okay, or something that uh, uh, that assure, or, or I don't know if it's right this this word, como asegurar, to ensure, okay, to ensure, yeah, to ensure that uh, the data that you collect could be 
uh, analyzed because is because uh, if most of the answers are open, uh, people could uh, expand more that more than uh, the topic that you want. Maybe you are only evaluating or trying to to collect data for two points, and people may be uh, answer another point, not your points that or, or not the points that you are getting uh, or, or uh -huh, that you that you want to get evaluated. Uh, Very good. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So that is it. I mean, this is uh, more a quantitative research. So, and as uh, Juan Miguel was saying, it's more a just no question. Maybe at the end, we can add two, three open questions just to get some feedback. What do you think about anything, right? But for us to identify in a better way, it's better to, in this kind of uh, interview, to have uh, just just the question, closed questions or multi-optional. Uh, so if you have these five options, any of those, okay, no more. So that is going to be better for you to get what you what you are looking to identify. Nice. Let's see. There are no words here. I guess every word here we know them. Okay, same structure interview. That is going to be for Danny. Okay. A structure, a structure interview. Uh, no, actually the other one. Uh, sorry? Uh, it should semi. be this, same as structure. Semi. Uh, sorry, sorry. Same structure interview. Unlike the structure interview, more general question or topic. Relevant topics are initially identify and the possible relationship between these topics and the issues become the basis for more specific question which do not need to be prepared in advance in advance allowing both the interviewer and the person being interviewed the flexibility to probe to prove for detail details or discuss issues. New questions can be brought, brought up during the interview as a result of what the interview interviewee says. So the interview follows more like a conversation. Okay, what did you get from this? Mm, well, this is a this brought me some memories when I study in the university. <laughs> <laughs> when when the teacher taught, taught us about the methods of collection or information collect. And, and that is one, that was one. And when you you uh, you have just the point or the principle um points or, or needs that you want to to know if you um you run you run the conversation and in these points but it is it hasn't to it hasn't be um like a very formal you can uh, handle with with a casual conversation, but uh, without, um, without, um, or with, or, or being carefully to not to lose um, the point that you want to know. Very good, perfect. Yeah, actually that is it, right? So you can start an interview with more specific things, but you can move on to general questions and you have uh, the option to, I mean, to give the word to people that you are interviewing so they can provide you the feedback. So, of course, you, you are going to direct the conversation so everything stays within the same topic, right? So, very good, very good. 
Let me check if there are any words here. Well, I don't think so. No. Okay, observation. That is going to be four. It's not possible. Uh, Francisco Eduardo. Hello, Francisco. Hello, teacher. Ah, uh, yeah, please. Observation is yours. Uh, observation. Yep. <clears throat> okay, teacher. Observation of working environment and performance of official office material, communication tools, IT system, men of Mean of circulate, circulating the information. What did you get from this method? A teacher in the in the context. What mean officials? Well, this is just an example that we are reading. Everything is based on an example for something that is for a real company so uh, in this case the most important is observation or Obs uh, officials it will be like employees we can say okay teacher and uh, i think uh, uh, the important for observation is uh, for a uh, phone uh, uh, mistake or uh, uh, opportunity for uh, improve uh, process um, uh, equipment and uh, the observation uh, I think is, is important in all areas or company. Uh, because it is the start to uh, make a, a change, a change for uh, improve, improve uh, anything. Okay, very good. Yeah, observation is a very basic thing, right? So you go and see how they are doing things, identify, and then you will be able to see if they need training in one or other way. So that is it. Questionnaire survey, that is for Jose Wilfredo. Okay, questionnaire survey. A questionnaire is a survey instrument, instrument consistent of a series of questions and other prompts for the purpose of gathering information from respondents. They are often designed for a statical analysis of the responses. Okay, that is kind of easy. What is what do you get from this? Uh, well, this means like the survey. Uh, is there a question on respondents? They are often designed as that analysis. Of, maybe uh, well, uh, to be honest, the survey is something like. Inform, extra information and this uh, in this topic is about the training so you have to know that the survey is related and uh, how was the training and extra information uh, um, what was uh, learning during the training Okay, very good. So that is it, right? It's like a question yeah. that you can send and they answer that one. And then you actually now with Google Forms is going to be very easy to get all the information. Oh yeah. And to That's get right. that in a, in a chart and a graphic. Wow, very good. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Focus group discussion, this is for Heidi. Okay, teacher. Okay. Qualitative research method 
whose purpose is to obtain a in deep information on ideas and perception of a group, and also to be more than a question answer interaction. A relatively small meeting, generally six to 12 participants, convened for a specific purpose under the direction of a facilitator during which group members talk freely and spontaneously about certain topic. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, these kind of focus groups are, are, are great because uh, the, the ideas come from, from the parts of the team that has that knowledge of a specific matter. So the, uh, in that way, they get the best ideas because they got the whole experience about it. Very good. Yes, actually, I totally agree. So whenever this is done, uh, there are many good things that you are going to get from the current employees. I mean, they are the ones who know, right? So, and then you will be able to correct things, to change processes, to identify training opportunities. So many, many good things can come from this. Exactly, literally, the ideas come from the experts. Yeah, that is so true. Very good, perfect, thank you. So uh, what is whose, anybody? Oh, maybe uh, some in, in this case is something that is theirs, okay? Uh, so sometimes so, something that belongs that belong to 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 this case, okay? To to this method, okay? Very good, perfect. That is it. Yeah, whose is the the question that in, implies possession, right? So that would be it. perfect. And what is a perception? Maybe the way that that every person. Is, um cut that in english to get uh -huh, how, may, how may, they get uh -huh, uh, the way that every uh, person get the idea of something uh -huh. okay uh, the way the way uh, <clears throat> the way that people think about something Perfect. So, yeah, how do you feel? How do you perceive things, right? Good. And let's see. What is now? Okay, uh, workshop. That is going to be for, let's see. Marcos, please help me with workshop. Okay, A workshop. Oh, sorry. An educational seminar or series of meetings and facilitating interaction and exchange of information among a usually small number of participants, developing skill or common understanding through some times of application, discussion on verification of identified staff training needs in the return TN. A questionnaires and interview results. Good. What did you get from this? Okay, uh, I understand that. And the workshop is um, a meeting to exchange and the knowledge and the information and with a small group. And the objective is to to put in practice all the, the information that the employees get in the training. So they have, they can put in practice with uh, 
a small talk, little talk, and talk about, uh, for example, also they can have a, a discussion and exchange the, um, the experience and the knowledge that they get in the training. Perfect, so that is it, I also, mean, uh -huh. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Also, they can use questionnaires and, and interviews to the, for example, the, the leader that is um, in charge of that workshop to measure that the, the, the workshop with interviews and questionnaires. Perfect. Perfect, Marco. Thank you. So yes, this is like a more, not like a class, it's like an interaction that everybody does. Sometimes with practices, right? You will be able to practice things and implement the ideas that they are being trained on. Good. And let's see. I don't think there is any word here. Okay. So it says the following table shows benefits and weaknesses of survey methods. Selection of the survey methods should be done according to availability of time and manpower for conducting the survey. It is recommended to combine several methods to quantitatively and qualitatively analyze the survey results. So yeah, this is something that I found very, very, very nice. Before we move on, what is manpower? Uh, is it is it how many persons you need to to finish a task? Very good. So that is it. Perfect. Thank you. So this is a very nice thing that we're gonna read. Let's see. Yeah, it's just about reading. So uh, Maria Alejandra, could you please help us reading this? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Uh, give me a second. I'm sorry. My, uh, give me a second. My computer up is done. Put a. Uh, uh, you're gonna charge it. Uh -huh, uh huh. Okay. No worries. We're gonna wait here. Okay. Okay. Ready. Okay. Uh, metal. Review of reference. A benefit is factual information. Obviously, can collect a lot of if you have resources. Weakness uh, may be out of date, may be inaccurate, of in, mm -hmm. inaccurate, of inconsistent, need cooperation of others to obtain information. When do you use when you need factual information about performance? Okay, let's continue. Okay, questionnaire survey. A simple, quick, easy, can collect a lot of data. And weakness, uh -huh. and may not get important information. People may not send back survey. May be hard to understand responses. Have to know more about your topic first, combined with other processes to encourage res response. Response, yeah. Response. Uh -huh. okay. Interview. Obtain information about active, attitudes. 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 Uh -huh. Obtain a lot of quality. Qualitative. Qualitative data can have greater understanding of issues. Takes time of yourself and others more difficult to organ, organize. Organize. Organize and may be shy to respond depending on interviewer. When you know a little about the topic or area, uh, when the training is about something complicated and focus with your discuss, discuss, discussion can be easy and quick and can understand response more easily. 
Uh, people may be shy to be honest in a gr in group. People may dominate discussion. When the training is impacted, the team work when there is not much time for other methods. Observation, does it not interrupt work? Interrupt work can be more reliable, re reliable. reliable than other sources. Can take up a lot of time, need time to collect, need to know what you are looking for. When the training is about simple skill, when you know about the topic yourself. Okay, very good. So this is a, a nice thing because we will be able to check what was the benefit, what are the weaknesses, so we can identify when to use. So that's why it's very important to understand which method we're going to use depending on the situation and depending on what you want, what you want to get, what kind of data you want to get, how you will understand the information. So this is going to be... Uh, just reading, actually. We don't know going to analyze because there's nothing to analyze there. And then it says, along with the selection of interview, which service methods are also selected considering availability of time and manpower. The following are sampling methods to be used for social survey. However, to make it simple, it is recommended that random sampling and stratified sampling methods be used for TNA and PILEC. And there are some of these ones. So it's just three. Uh, let's see. Fernando, please help us with this. Okay, teacher. Uh, method, random sampling. Purest form of probability sampling. Each member of the population has an equal and no chance of being selected. When there are very large population, it is often difficult or impossible to identify every member of the population. So the pool of available subjects becomes biased. 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 What mean biased? Bias. Do you remember yesterday that we were talking about bias that you believe or is when you handle in, in a society or in the company and you give more importance to one other person than another one. So in this case, it's, uh, it's not going to happen that one because you are going to do it randomly. So you are not going to choose. Okay, please okay. continue with the other one. Okay. Systematic sampling. Often used instead of random sampling. It is also called um, NTH, nay selection technique, after the required sample size has been calculated, every NTH record is selected from a list of the target population of members, as long as the list does not contain any hidden order. This sampling method is as good as the random sampling method. Its only advantage over the random sampling technique is simplicity. M stratified sampling. Commonly used method that is superior to random sampling because it reduces sampling error. Uh, a statin is a subset of the population that share at least one common characteristic. Uh, sorry, the noise is. <laughs> okay, no worries. No, it's not mine. Okay. okay. Uh, the surveyors identify the relevant stratum in the actual representation in the population. A stratified sampling is often used when one or more of the stratum in the population have a low incidence related to the other stratum. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, this is method uh, are, are useful for recollect information, but are different because uh, in the first one, you have a random sampling, a sample random June that is a um, member that participate in this, in this method. Um, all of them have the chance of being selected or not. And the systematic sampling is more, more um, prepared because is um, maybe, I don't understand 
NTH. Yeah, NTH is like uh, no name. There is no name selection, so. No name selection. Like, uh -huh. Ah, okay. But uh, this method require a calculate sample. And for the last stratified sampling, I understand that it's a method for gathering information, but uh, directly to a, strat a stratum. Um, that's it. Yeah, very good. So this is way, these are ways for you to identify who is going to take the survey, for example. In the random, it doesn't matter. You need a hundred people to answer and you just send to a hundred people and that's it. In the systematic sampling, there are like orders, right? Orders, but might be in alphabetical order, no specific things. And in the stratified, there are some characteristics that you are going to get so you identify who are going to best people to answer this so, so this is just about who is going to be part of this one the sampling definitely let's check some vocabulary um i don't think there are many here what is hidden Has been high. Not show. High. Okay, high, not shown. Very good. And I don't think that. Teacher, I have a question. The correct yeah. pronunciation is hidden or heightened? Hidden. This word is hidden. Okay, thank you. Because hiding is ing, hiding. Okay. Good, perfect. Okay. So it says question resolving design proceeds in an orderly and specific manner. Each item in the flow chart shown below depends upon the successful completion of all the previous items. Therefore, it is important not to skip a single step. Notice that there are two feedback loops in the flow chart to allow revisions to the methodology and instruments. So this is like there the TNA, right? How you will conduct them. Design methodology, determine feasibility, develop instruments, select sample, that is what we were doing at the end. Conduct pretest, revise instruments, conduct research, analyze data and prepare report. So this is kind of clear. This is a very good thing actually. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I can I can lay in. TNA, what, what it mean? Okay, everybody, what is TNA? Training needs, training needs assessment. assessment. Very good. Okay, so training needs assessment, that is the topic for today. Good. Okay, thank you. Good, so and it says, by using a systematic approach, you can ensure that gaps in performance are identified correctly. Usually only those gaps caused by lack of knowledge or skills can be improved through training performance deficiencies that occur because of lack of motivation, environmental problems, or system issues require non-training interventions such as changes in the selection process, the performance appraisal process, or the reward system. So that's something that we discussed before. So this is more like things that you need to learn, skills that you need to learn on how to do something, right? Uh, maybe some behavior things, but if it's about motivation, if it's about things within the company, processes, the environment in general in the company, of course, that is something different. For example, the focus group might be a good idea for that one because you will get feedback from the people that is actually, that are actually doing the job. Okay, let's move on then. Next one is going to be four, let's see. I have read a lot today. Heidi, could you please help me with these three paragraphs? Sure. The first one is creating a questionnaire. Yep. In creating questionnaires, it is important to consider the type, content, wording, and order of the questions that 
they include type of question. For the type of questions, there are two types of questions to be asked, closed-ended questions and open-ended ended questions. Closed-ended questions limit response answer to the survey. The participants are allowed, are allowed to choose from either a pre-existing set of decodemos answers, <laughs> such as yes or no or multiple choice with an option for other to be filled in or ranking scale response options options. The most common of the ranking scale questions is called the scale, the scale question. This kind of questions asks the respondents to look at a statement and then rank this statement according to the degree to which they agree strongly agree, somewhat agree, no option, someone disagree, somewhat disagree, st strongly disagree. Please continue. Open-ended questions. Do not give respondents answers to choose from, but rather are phrased so that the respondents are encouraged to explain their answers and reactions to the questions with a sentence, a paragraph, or even a page or more depending on the survey. If you wish to find information on the same topic, but would like to find out what respondents would come up with on their own, you might choose an open-ended question like, what kind of training do you want to attend? Rather than the skill question. Okay. However- Until then, sorry. If, so okay. uh, what did you get from this part? That um, depending on what you want to know, it's that you choose the kind of, a, a kind of questions. If you need to need the next specific information, you might use this in yes, no questions. But if you need to, to go deeply into the need, maybe you can use open-ended questions very good perfect so that is it also remember that is uh, well the closed-ended questions are not going to be just uh, the caramel answers like yes or no right you might get multiple choice like uh, do you agree or which one is better for you or which is uh, closest to what you think so that will be it and on the other hand of course the open-ended questions for all that information that we really need to know more in detail what the, the employees are, are thinking or doing or having. So that is that is the importance of this one. Let's see if there are some words. Uh, I don't think there are many words. Somewhat, what is somewhat? Partially agree. Partially, very good. Kind of, right? More or less. And let's see. No, there are no other. Okay, the other two paragraphs. Uh, Jose Rivas. Okay. So, however, Okay, however, keep in mind that you do, do not have to use close ended or open ending questions. Or often to researchers use close ending questions at the beginning of the survey and then allow a lot for more expensive, expansive to answers once the respondent has some background on the issue and a warm up. When considering the, the content content of your questionnaire, the most important consideration is whether the content of the questions will elicit okay, the kinds of questions necessary the to kind. answer your initial sorry. The kinds of questions. The kinds of questions 
necessary to answer your initial research question, you can uh, gauge the appro appropriateness of your question by pretexting the survey. But you should also consider the following question as you create your initial questionnaire. Very good. What did you get from this? Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I got it correctly. So, but it's like, so in order that we can get like more information with the service, so we like we can keep uh like the opening, opening and ending questions, and then so like we can get the, the background in order to like search for some information or like for some content, so that will help you or will help us, so like with the issue, I don't know, so if, okay. if I got it correctly. Definitely, yes, yeah, uh, well, it means that uh, it's not that you are going to use only closed-ended or open-ended questions, sometimes for warm-up or for you to identify certain parts, you cannot start the survey with the closed-ended questions, and then you can move on of, to the open, so you can get the feedback that you really want to get from the from the employees. Let's check some uh, words. Uh, researchers, what is that? Anybody? People who investigate. Very good, people who investigate. Let's see. What is allowed? Let. 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 Uh, to let to permit very good to permit to let what is let's see Alice in animals to get to get very good to get the response to get a drawing of something and gauge Like a measure. Very good. That is like measure. And there is no other I guess. Good. So it says wording of the questions. This is going to be for, let me just check here. Okay. Anna Claudia, could you please help me with this? With uh, the figure four wording of the question? Yeah, please. Uh, all the first, the second, or? Uh, all of it, please. All of them? Yes, please. Okay, wording of the questions. Uh, does your choice of open or closed-ended questions lead to the types of answers you would like to get from your respondents? Is every question in your survey in integral? As he said, Chara, said yeah. integral to your intent, superfluous questions that have already been addressed or are not relevant to your study will waste the time of both the respondents and the researcher. Does, does one topic warrant more than one question? Do you give enough prior information context for each set of questions? Sometimes lead-in questions are useful to help the respondent become familiar and com comfortable with the topic. Are the questions both general enough? They are both standardized and relevant to your entire sample. And specific enough, avoid vague generalization and ambiguousness. 
is each question as succinct? I don't know. To... Succinct, yeah. Succinct as it can be without leaving out essential information. Finally, and most important, write a survey that you will be willing to answer yourself and be polite, courteous, and sensitive. Thank the responder you're participating both at the beginning and at the end of the survey. Good, what did you get from this? Mm, okay, uh, every time I'm getting service, I just answer him because I want them to finish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I know that every question must be analyzed and uh, it brings my attention the the number, let me see, it's, I guess it was the number four that it says, that if you give enough uh, private information or, or context, uh, because that will be helping the respondent to become familiar and comfortable. And so it would be easy to provide the information you're looking for in a survey, not just pass, 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 or complete just to finish. Yeah. But most of the time, because we want to uh, finish, that is what we do. Uh, and thinking of, the service we must complete every time we, uh, the company made us to, to make a, a training. I'm looking at that they change the dynamic on the way how they provide the service. They are doing exactly this. They are testing the, like the best way for us to complete the service, but at the same time getting the, they getting the information they are looking for. I haven't think in that way before until we are looking all of this right now. I see there is a, a, a big effort creating a, a, a training or a survey who could be, maybe one can think is, one thing is uh, simple, but it's not. Very good, perfect. Yes, actually, you're right. It's not that simple. I mean, if you really want to do something nice, and if you really want to help people identify something or fix something, yeah, it, it takes time. It, it takes meetings. Uh, it takes decisions. It takes somebody, sometimes a team entire, uh, for them to create a lot of things, a lot of questions, the methods, the service. And then when they receive all the information to check the answers and to decide, right? And uh, of course, you know, whenever they send this kind of service, there is a percentage, there is a rate that is for, uh, I mean, it's not that accurate. As you say, sometimes mm -hmm. there are people that are like, oh yes, yes, for everything, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a little rate that is going to include that one that is accurate but maybe not that accurate 100 percent, right mm -hmm. but takes time takes a lot of effort a lot of a lot of things so this so, so the 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 goal is to have or to get as much accurate information as you can for example right now in the company they in consent at concentrics they I don't remember if they make like three or four service in, during the year. Right now, uh, there is one running in all these months is for employee survey. They are asking us if we agree with this, with that. They look for the management, the environment we work. I have most, most of my, my uh, team, my colleagues, my, my peers, they just put the neutral, 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 neutral because they don't want to, to uh, waste time. They say they don't want to give any explanation. Just neutral, 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 and that's it. And I think, my goodness, how, how many people will be in the same situation? How accurate will be the information that on the other side they will be getting? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's important. I mean, as I was telling you sometimes with the problem, and we discussed that before today, the problem is that uh, the employees, sometimes they don't know how important things are. Mm -hmm. They don't know the objectives, their goals, and uh, they just uh, 
do things in automatic, right? Or mm -hmm. even worse, they they take neutral and then whenever they provide feedback, they just bad things. Right? I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Just because I want to do it in this way. Exactly, but mm -hmm. not it's not like uh, it's something that is like positive for uh, for the team to improve, right? So mm -hmm. that happens a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. That is real life. It's a pain. Okay, let's check some words. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, respondents, what is that? The ones who are fulfilling the, the survey. Of course. Who are you providing answers? What is superfluous? Superficial. Very good, superficial, not relevant, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, warrant, what is warrant? It has to do something with the warranty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In this case, it's something like uh, is 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 going to provide the or assure. Uh huh. Things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some other. Let me just check. Yes, there was a, a different word. What is something that is vague? Maybe something that is that that is not specific. Very good, not specific. So it's like when you're speaking about one thing and there's finished speaking another thing. And what is ambiguousness? Could uh, be either one or another. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's whenever oh, you ask man. a question and the answer is not going to provide you accurate information, right? So it's like, do you like sweet things? Yes. I mean, but sweet things is like candies or pie or what? Okay, so. Mm -hmm. uh, six in, I guess this is the new one. Mm -hmm. Okay, six in is like briefly, concise. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's see if there is any other. Conscious. What is to be courteous? Polite. To be nice. Very uh -huh. good. Perfect. Very good. Of course, we are not going to continue. There are many other things, but we're going to continue tomorrow. So, uh, do you have any question before we finish? Just about the the activity is the two point fourteen. Okay. Ah uh, yes, that would be it, and. I mean, we need to finish the uh, section two and the midterm test. That's it. Okay. okay. So I'm going to tomorrow, say, right? No. Uh, yeah. Please do it either tomorrow or tomorrow is Wednesday okay. or or Thursday. Uh, I'm going to send the uh, the grades on Friday. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So in case you haven't finished some of those. You still have two more days, but it's important for you to finish before Friday, before the class of Friday. Okay. Okay, teacher. Very good. I have a question about the platform, teacher. At the end, will you help me? Okay, of course, yes. So let's check the attendance, my friends. And uh, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Yala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. 
María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Present teacher, Ramón. Good. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Night. Thank you. Good night. good night, everybody. Good night. Okay. <laughs> I think Ada is still. Oh, well. Yeah. That's um, up. Okay. My mm, problem um, is one, it's with just one exercise. I don't know. I don't know why, but it, it I can complete is in the 2.2 homework. And the exercise number four, she was upset, she was angry. And I have tried <laughs> in all the possible ways, but it still is wrong. Yeah, that is because it has uh, an error. So uh, number four, here is it. So yeah. you should write, she not only was upset, but uh, in was. this one, actually, this is the, the error. You don't have to write also, you have to write Oslo. <laughs> I don't know why, but that is the only way that that is going As, to Oslo. Yeah, it's an error <laughs> in the platform. Uh, so it should be uh, she not only was upset, but all Oslo <laughs> angry. Wait. Oslo. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> um, and I I have skipped and I uh, have worked in the in the other, but I I don't I don't feel comfortable with, oh, with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no worries. Whenever you have questions, you can ask me, and of course, it will be a pleasure. Yeah, I, 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 I thought in, in, in I, I said uh, I'm going to ask the teacher, but I never do. Yeah, now. that won't be possible if you don't know that one, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, now it's okay. <laughs> Perfect. So do you have yeah, any other just, question? No, no, just that. <laughs> Only that. Perfect, Danny. Yeah. So it was a pleasure to be with you. you. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.